This is going to be uh, Go, as in the Go programming language, and uh, creating a website with sessions. And we're going to do this stuff right here. So you can pause your browser if you're watching this video online. This is our homework over the week weekend. And uh, you could just read through that, pause the video and read through that. That's what we're going to be doing together. And the code base, if you want to look at the code in the code base that we're working through, my username is GitHub goes to 11. And we're working in the Golang web dev repo. That's where you'll find the code. You should also follow me on Twitter because I'm always like tweeting Go, Go programming stuff. Love the Go programming language. And the uh, last thing I'll point out is I have a website that I'm building with some friends, which is going to be cool. Help people uh, learn skills and get jobs. So it hasn't launched yet, but it's going to be launching soon. So you can get notified when we release and also come check it out when we have released. It's going to be awesome. That said, let's do this. And uh, the first one is going to be to create a cookie that stores uh, UUID as the value. You'll want to use the string method to turn the UUID into string. Set that cookie to the client's browser. So let's go to go 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 land and uh, here we're in spring 17 and we've got a bunch of folders there we've got cookie right there and I'm just gonna create a new one 43 new directory 43 call it cookie and is my uh, font size big enough can you all see that no yes let's see what it looks like when I start typing some code and so package main and uh, the first thing I do is uh, just func main and uh, HTTP dot listen and serve. And that's going to be the default serve mux listening on port 8080. And uh, there's the default serve mux. Right? And then HTTP dot handle func, handler func, handle func. Handle func, handle func. There we go. And we want to handle that route and we'll go to the func index. And, uh, and if you don't know um, what all this is doing, we're just sort of reviewing some things here. And you could go to YouTube, Todd McLeod. And I have a YouTube channel, which was originally my YouTube channel. But I've since learned from everybody who follows me on this YouTube channel that it's actually the Go programming language YouTube channel. <laughs> and people are like, don't post stuff that's not Go. This is the Go channel. I'm like, oh, all right. So I... Uh, I I, I created a new YouTube channel, the Greater Commons YouTube channel, and uh, and that one I just post like web dev, like HTML, CSS, things like that. All right, so there's the first part, and then I do a func index, and it has to have a response writer from the HTTP package, and uh, it needs to have a pointer to a request from the HTTP package, and uh, and there we go, and so that's all looking pretty good, and I could write a response. And uh, I guess we'll wire it up with templates because templates are fun. And so I'll put a new folder here, templates. And inside templates, I could create a template. So I'll just do a new file and call it index.gohtml. And then in here, right, there's my uh, gohtml file and, uh, uh, I don't know, um, index page, whatever. And uh, we'll just do h1 you are at index and then on the main page just as a review I need to have a var tbl is from package template it's type template and we want that to be a pointer to a template and uh, and then it wants me to choose which one and it says uh, use control and enter no, it wants option enter. There we go. Import and multiple choices. I'm going to go with HTML template. There we go. And now I'll do a init to initialize my templates. TPL is equal to uh, template must and uh, template parse glob. And it's going to parse. Uh, we want to go into templates and star.gohtml. So it's going to parse all the files it finds in the templates folder that end with gohtml. And so down here I could then do tpl.execute template and execute it to my response writer. And I want to execute the template index.gohtml. And, uh, and I'm going to pass in no data. And so now we could just check to make sure that that works. 
How many people you followed all that and you're like bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang? I'm with it. Let me see your hands. Nice, right? But it's also kind of good to do. Like, you know, just even me doing that, it's been a couple of weeks or two weeks, I don't know, since we've done kind of that whole bang. And uh, it dusts off the cobwebs. So let's, uh, let's test it out. I need to launch my terminal. And, uh, and then just cd, cd, documents, go, uh, go, documents, isn't that where it is? ls, cd, go, source, github, github, goes to 11, go lang, web dev, and I'm in 0, 0, 0, 46, 43, and go run main.go. And I'll make this maybe a little bigger. You guys know that stuff. Yard index. It's always, uh, I think that's part of what makes programming a little bit addictive, is it's got that intermittent positive reinforcement, which is one of the strongest conditionings in behavioralism, psychology. Um, you don't always win, but you sometimes win. It doesn't always run, but most of the time it runs. All right. So the next thing we want to do is just write a cookie. So what's our first step? Who remembers? So we go and we remind ourselves what is a cookie. We go to godoc.org, net HTTP, and we look for cookie. And we see that cookie is a type. And uh, it has name and value. Cool. And then there's also something about wanting a pointer to a cookie. And so uh, when we set a cookie, setting a cookie wants to have a pointer to a cookie. And so we could create a cookie, C, and uh, oh, and then also where does a cookie, how do we retrieve a cookie? Where would we look in the documentation for retrieving a cookie? Bueller, 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 we'd look at the request. And so if we look down here at type request, we have cookie, and it's a method attached to the request, and uh, we give it a name, and it gives us a pointer to a cookie in an error. All right? And so the first thing we might do is a uh, pointer to a cookie, C, and an error, is equal to, from my request, cookie, and give it some name, session. All right? And so now we could check that error, and if error is not nil, then we could say let's create a cookie, and this is going to be from the HTTP package, it's going to be a cookie, and here's a composite literal. The composite literal has the type, and so there's the type. It's type cookie from package HTTP, and then we give it curly braces, and in between the curly braces, we populate it with values, and this needs to be a pointer, so we take the address of it, and, uh, and it's already set up there, so we do that. C is equal to that, and, uh, and then we give it, we, give it, we populate the, the field values, and the field values on the cookie are type cookie, name, and value. So name, session, value. And here's where we want to create that UUID value. And so how do we get a UUID? We could go to Godoc and search for UUID. And then inside UUID, we could look and we can see, OK, there's different UUIDs. We'll do the new seven hatch. That's what we've been doing in class, and I think that's what the homework specifies. Uh, doesn't specify. And, uh, and so here we have a new v4, and a new v4 gives us a pointer to UUID and an error. And when we have a pointer to UUID, we have string, which will give us back the string of that UUID. And so this is uh, from new seven hatch go UUID. And so we could say u colon equal UID uh, new v4. And that's GitHub Satori. There's GitHub new 7 hatch. Okay, and I already have that package installed. And so you might have to do a go git and go get this right here. And the go git would just be at your terminal. You'd copy that. And then at your terminal, you'd say, I'm going to stop running that. Go get, I'm going to do a dash u to update my cookie or my uh, package. 
And so that's going to update whatever I have in my workspace. And uh, now it just updated it. So there's my UUID, and then I'm going to do a, a U string. And that gave me a string of it. Now this is giving me an error. Let's see what's happening. Multiple value, UUID, new value, and single value context. So maybe I was using Satori, because I don't want to have to check the error. So let's check out Satori. And Satori is UUID, new v4, gives you UUID. You don't have to check the error. I'm going to change this and get rid of new 7 hatch. And I'm going to do Satori. And uh, let's see, what is it? It's go UUID. So Satori, let's just do UUID. UID. Dot new v4. There's Satori. I like that better. I'll have checked the error. How's that looking? And we could pass our cookie in over here. And now that error will go away because we're using it. So we're passing our cookie, which is a struct, into our template. And uh, in our template, we could say uh, if we don't need if, we just need that. That will give us the value. No, we do need if. If and then end. And then we could do h2, the entire cookie. And that would just be the dot. And then we could also do h2 name. And call the fields, and we could do value. Right? Right? Cool. And uh, so we passed our cookie in there, and that should be. Is there anything else that's needed in this just for the moment? I think I think a good one to always add is path, right? And just put it to that so that no matter where you set this in your application, you could be buried down a couple of pages if you were. But it's always good to set your path to root, which means the cookie is going to be accessible throughout the whole site, all the paths. If you were to set this at some other path like dog, Toby, and you set the cookie there, then you'd only be able to access the the cookie at this path or deeper down, pass deeper down, unless you had this. Now I'd be able to access this cookie throughout the whole site. So the path one is good to set. What's another one that's good to set? We have, let's just go look at them. We have path and domain is kind of tricky. And then there's max age if we want to expire it. But secure and HTTP only are also good ones. So what's uh, secure do? Secure means you can only access it on HTTPS. And so we're not on HTTPS, so I'm not going to do the, the secure. But I will do the HTTP only, because that's just good practice. And uh, I will put that to uh, true. All right? You can only access this with HTTP. You can't access it with JavaScript. So those are just good practices to set those. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to go to my local host and pop this open and look at my application and look at my cookies. And there's a Gogland cookie there. I'm going to delete it. And, uh, and I'm going to run this. And uh, then I'll come back here and refresh it. And, uh, and now here, site has no cookies. The entire cookie session, path, HTTP only. Name is session, value is that. Why didn't that, why is there no cookie? Huh? How did this code come out here and there's no cookie there? Let's look at the code. What am I missing? What did I forget to do? 
Yeah, let's hear it, baby. Set the cookie. So to set the cookie, if you forget the syntax on that, come back here, set cookie. And uh, right here, we have set cookie. And response writer, uh, it takes a response writer and a pointer to a cookie. So we're going to go right here, and we'll do response writer, uh, HTTP.setCookie, response writer, and cookie. So now let's run that again. Okay, so there's no cookie there. Now I'm going to refresh this page. I got a different UUID, and there it is now, right down there. Pretty nice, right? I like that one. So let's see if we hit all the points of that first homework. Create a cookie that stores a v4 UUID as the value. You'll want to use a string method to turn the v4 UUID into string. Set that cookie on the client's browser. All right, so that's it. We got that first one. Oh, and use uh, go get Satori. So Satori is the one I asked you to use. Cool. All right. Um, and for this next one, we'll do it in another video.